Wow, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. A lot of news happened this morning, this afternoon. There's going to be a lot more news coming uh, tomorrow morning. So let's just get right into it. This is where we are. The market, the NASDAQ here has been up nine out of the last 10 days. It's coming up to some of our resistance points here. I'll get into the technicals after. Right now, let's cover the news and see exactly what happened today, starting with the jobs numbers, the revisions. The pre-revision numbers, here's the pre-revision, here's the revised, down 31% from where they had stated previously that the jobs were. So in other words, they had manufactured um, literally 818,000 jobs that now they're saying did not exist. This is the largest downward revision since 2009. And uh, you can see here, what took place here. And of course they're saying it ac accidentally takes place during the election year. And this, they have a right to be mad. This is not a political channel, but this is just wrong. These organizations, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, they're supposed to be unbiased, unpolitical. They're supposed to give us good numbers. It's obvious now they weren't. And this is what was happening. And fortunately, some people like myself knew this at least six months ago because the numbers come out, the job number hits the, uh, the markets, it makes the news, and it looks good and uh, it's it's set on the radio. And then the next month, what they do is they quietly revise the number down. Okay, they got it wrong. They, they needed to add some things in they didn't account for. But when that happens eight out of the last 12 months and they're big revisions, you think, hmm, statistically, all of these revisions are going in the same direction. They're going down. They're trying to make the economy look better than it is and then announcing the news after nobody really cares. So I don't know what happened today where they decided to announce it, maybe because Joe Biden is out and he doesn't care anymore. I don't really know. Again, I don't know who, I don't care who it is. These numbers should be honest. And um, now we've got this sort of corruption within the, the government, even within the labor department. I don't, I don't believe for a moment that this was just um, bad statistics that they didn't get everything. I think they did this on purpose. It's wrong and something should be done about it. I mean, we don't trust numbers coming out of China because you know we say communist countries put whatever numbers they want. How are we any better if we're doing this now? So anyway, that's my rant, but um, I believe that's true and it's really unfortunate. So how did the market react on this news? Well, it actually reacted negatively at first. So um, here are the two candles. Here's the reaction to see this big, these are, um, 30 minute candles. In fact, let's go to the 15. And you can see what happened immediately. It went up on initially, then down, down here. And then the rest of the day, it just kind of shrugged it off and went up. And the reason why is because this is bad news. And what does bad news mean in terms of jobs numbers? It means higher chance that the Fed is going to lower rates probably this week, or if not this week, in early September. Um, because they are at Jackson Hole right now, and they're talking about these things. They know about these jobs numbers, and now it's almost certain that they will um, cut rates very soon. So that's why the market said, yeah, it's bad news, but it's great. And then um, there was another piece of news that came out today, the Fed minutes. In other words, the minutes of their meetings that they've had in the last few weeks, and the minutes came out and basically said, yeah, we're on a path to cut rates. Everybody's sort of uh, gaining consensus. And that's that's why the market was up today on very bad news, right? The reason they're cutting rates, of course, if you just think about this, is because the economy, the jobs numbers are starting to tank. And that is not good news. But the market is just so rate cut centric. All they care about is rate cuts and, and um, sort of easy money. And so that's why they're celebrating this news. Now, as far as tomorrow, in addition to the Fed meeting in Jackson Hole taking place, some announcement will come out of that on Friday, I expect. But tomorrow, look at all these red items. These are high items. Some numbers coming out of Great Britain, a lot of numbers coming out of the U.S., manufacturing and jobless numbers. This should be very interesting because if they are being freer with that information now and they're telling the truth, maybe these numbers won't be revised and maybe they'll actually tell what the number is. That will be very interesting to see. Um, in any case, I expect it to be lower than expected. And so therefore I expect the dollar to continue moving down. That's good for precious metals. Um, should be bad for stocks, but it depends on how the market takes it, right? 
if it's just a little down, they'll say that's okay and the market will rally because that means interest rates will go down. If it's a lot down, like recession or depression numbers, then the market will tank. And if it's up, if it's too high, the market will not like that because that might mean um, we don't need to lower rates. So that's how I'm looking at it. I would say two out of three of those options take the market down. And that's where I'm leaning tonight and I'm looking for some good short positions. So getting back to my accounts and the plan, you can see here, this was my line of the sand. If we go, if we close over that, I'm reducing positions. I continued to do that today. I still had a loss about 500 and um, I'm still in about a third of those positions for short. And the reason I'm staying is we have not yet broken out of this. You can see this zone here where, where we've had lots of history of bouncing back and forth. Above that, I, I get out of everything. Um, below this, I'd wait and see. I want us to cross below this white line and then I can add to those short positions. So my bias right now is still short, but we're very, very close to breaking out into this area where I would go long, even if it's just um, low leverage, right? If I don't like it, I don't like the position, I still take the direction that the trend is going. I might just take it for less leverage, but I'd like to get in this position with a high amount of leverage. Um, but the market has not really allowed me to do that. I got in here. I had to start getting out past the white line. And I've added today on my chart, and this is something I normally look at. These are 20 day channels, price channels. So notice what happens when you hit these price channels and you stick, it goes up and that starts a new trend. So we're just on the cusp of that here. If it, if it starts to come up and stick right at the same spot my yellow line is, so I like to look for a confluence in signals, and that would be a good one, then you know it's time to get out, right? Because now this defines a new trend, at least how I define a new trend. And I know a lot of people are like, you should have gone out a long time ago, but in this particular account, it's a more long-term account. So the trend doesn't begin for me until this it hits this purple line and sticks and then goes up. Um, but on the shorter term accounts, I've actually been going long. And that's the difference maybe how I trade because I trade different uh, multiple time frames for accounts. So it's very possible and often happens where I have in one account going short, but on a shorter time frame going long. It's kind of like a hedge um, as opposed to a stop. So um, that's how I trade. And it's worked out really well, especially in uh, Forex lately. I mean, I'm, I'm on a kind of a tear here in, in Forex. I've had almost all good days so far. Uh, that rarely happens, um, but we're up about 15% silver and gold in an uptrend still. And this is this is one of the longer term holds that I have. So I'm looking more at actually the, the daily, but also the um, weekly. So let's take a look at that weekly. And this is kind of how I'm viewing gold. You can see it's an uptrend, another new high here. So I'm holding on, it's sticking to this purple line, which indicates a trend continuation. So no reason to sell my gold there. I did sell my silver, to kind of take some profits on that. If it, if it dives down, I'll buy again. But taking a look at silver on the same kind of weekly chart, we're not sticking to the purple line yet. We're a little weaker than gold, actually quite a bit weaker than gold, but we're still headed up the last two and a half weeks here. So, um, you know, your call there, whether you want to hold on to it or sell it and look for something lower. I, I certainly think anything under 30 is a great deal. So I do have some, um, some remaining long positions there, but for the most part, I'm in gold, gold because I think we're more likely to go into a recession. Gold is going to do a little bit better in a recession. So I kind of switched from silver to gold for now. I'll get back into silver because silver is actually cheaper than gold when you look at it, look at the gold silver ratio right now. So despite some of these losses, we are up about $337 per day over the last 13 days. And remember our goal eventually is about $725 a day. That's $190,000 a year. Um, but, but our first 25 days, we wanna hit a target of around 300 a day. So, so far, so good there, we're on track. Let's turn to Russia for a second. A couple of things happened in the last couple of days and weeks here. Ukraine actually took a force of their best units and including some Western uh, European commando units, uh, private contractors, mercenaries, along with some US mercenaries, I hear, 
and they actually invaded into Russian territory, blowing up some bridges, trying to entrenching themselves in. Um, this is angering Russia big time. I do not like where this is going as somebody who grew up in the 80s and all of the Cold War and the nuclear threats and all of that. I think right now is even more dangerous than that because these are NATO forces that are doing this. We also had uh, drones flying into Moscow, the biggest drone attack that went on. Uh, does, does anyone worry that Russia is going to respond? I think so far they've been pretty tepid in their responses, but sooner or later they're going to say, okay, we've had enough of this. And maybe they send, uh, maybe they bomb a NATO base where these weapons are coming from or something like that. I don't like this at all as a dad, but also as a trader, I need to look out here because at any moment something could break out and I've got to be defensive if I'm, if I'm against, uh, if, if something like that happens, I've got to be defensive in my positions. That's another reason why I don't want to go too long at this point. Um, that could easily reverse in, a, in an hour if, if something like this happens. Turning to the Iran-Israel situation, we're getting word just now, just coming in, that uh, the situation is a little better in that Iran is saying, or some people are saying, Iran may not attack after all. That's the first time I've heard that. So we'll see if that's real or not. I know this situation changes, but those are two hot spots around the world. Anything can happen. So I treat, try to keep myself apprised on these things, even though I really don't trade on them. You can't trade on this kind of stuff. You don't know what's going to happen. I can take note and be very defensive about my positions because of it, but I'm not going to trade on it. Now, one thing to note, there still is a lot of fear out there. How do I know this? Look at this um, dollar peso move here. This spike, these spikes like this are not normal. People are fearing a little bit. They're risk off. And so I keep a watch on this because, you know, some of these rich traders know more than I do about what's happening in the, in the news and in the world. They have faster and better resources. So if I see a spike like this in the U.S. Mexican peso, I think risk off something might happen. Now, does that mean uh, something will happen? No, some things spike for no reason sometimes. But interesting that while stocks are uh, going up, people are getting a little bit antsy in some of these currency positions. The other one I've been looking at and actually trading quite a bit in is the dollar yen. And this reverse yen carry trade is still occurring. So again, another divergence from the stock market. Um, they usually align and go in the same direction. They are not. So right now, a lot of mixed signals on the currencies. They appear to be more risk off and very careful and cautious. While in stocks, it seems like bad news is good news and they don't really care. It's just, it's just a short squeeze and they're going to continue until it stops. So that's how I see the world right now. That's how I see all these different positions. Um, let me know in the comments if you see something a little different because that helps me. I like to get other points of view, but that's how I'm looking at things. Once again, guys, the beauty of trading in three different accounts with three different um, investment vehicles in three different time frames is that you have a ton of diversity. You could be losing as, say your main position is short, um, you see some things on these smaller term charts and you want to take it in that direction. Today, for example, we took this move higher and we're able to mitigate some of the losses on our um, main futures trading platform. So the beauty of that is you're never going to get in a situation where um, you're not hedged in some way. And, and these, these are very different vehicles. And so one move in the market isn't going to kill you. And remember, I keep a reserve, a cash and value reserve outside of these three accounts, just in case one of these three accounts has a, an absolute meltdown or something. Do those kinds of events occur? Absolutely. There have been times where um, the yen or the Swissy has dropped like 800 pips in a matter of seconds um, on some news that occurs. So you have to be prepared for anything. And I protect myself from those eventualities by, first of all, leaving some money outside of those accounts, just in a savings account or a cash equivalent. And then I have three different accounts so that my chances of getting knocked out completely are very close to zero. And that's how I like to trade. 
All right, so one more look at the market. I actually had to leave, take my son to basketball practice. It's been about two hours, and I noticed the market has dropped pretty good futures. They were up uh, about 0.2%. Now they're down 0.1%. My account went uh, up by about $400 during that time. So good news there. Let's hope it uh, drops some more tonight. And I'm expecting the job numbers to be not that great. I'm expecting the market to go down tomorrow morning. That's just based on the research I've done on the jobs numbers. And um, all of the stuff that's been happening, I think the jobs will be underwhelming at best. But as always, I could be wrong. And this market could rally one more time. Uh, so we will wait and see on that. All right, one more look at the Japanese carry trade before I get some sleep and wake up for a big morning news event. Um, it looks like it's heading down, making a little money on that one. And I like when stocks and the carry trade are both heading down in the same direction. That's what I'm expecting for tomorrow. We'll see if it happens. Hey, if you like these videos and the little tips and everything, please uh, just click on the like or subscribe and I'll do more of them. Thanks, everyone.